Hello there, good morning and good evening and a warm welcome to one and all of you my dear brothers and sisters. First of all, wish you a happy new year. I hope um, uh, this year has given you that uh, refreshing thoughts. I do not know about your previous year, but I'm a strong believer on starting everything afresh. So if, if at all, for some reasons, the last year was really bad for you, you have lost some of your near ones, dear ones, and you have suffered losses because of the pandemic. Pandemic is still not ending, but do not worry. Bible says, in this world there are troubles, but do not be afraid. John 14, 1. My peace I give to you, not that the peace that the world offers, but my peace I give it to you. The peace that you will possess from the hands of our Lord Jesus is going to sustain you. That's the beauty of this peace. And those that shall taste this peace, they will never look for any other alternate. So when you get into this experience of reading the word of God and meditating on his precious word, that's when you are going to experience the promises. Otherwise, the promises will stand afar and it will wait. Come and embrace me. And, uh, you know, you are not able to reach that. Then you and I are the losers. That's why we get into these kind of sessions and we always encourage you that we shall meditate on this word of God together. Warm welcome again and this is one of the short sessions where we are going to deal today on a very common subject, a universal subject. It's about the government, right? It's about, it's not only about the Indian government. Don't uh, think that I'm going to talk something about the politics or, you know, gossip about this politician or this and that. No, sorry, I, I, did, I did not come here for that. Uh, we have never done that in our channel, if you see, we always had been requesting people to be submissive to the government authorities. That's what Bible teaches us from Romans 13 and 2 Peter, you will see Peter writes a lot of instructions to be submissive to the authorities. And we got to pray for our ministers, the member of parliaments and, um, you know, for MLAs or councillors, whoever it may be, we got to pray for them. There is no point getting into emotional outbursts. Yes, there are, of course, a lot of um, people who loot money, but we are not talking about them. Here we are going to meditate today from Isaiah chapter 9 verse 2 and 5 and 6 and 7 and 8. And all of us know one of the verses in Isaiah 9, 6 that for unto us a child will be born. Very famous verse. But I'm not getting in there directly. Now here the Lord talks through Isaiah on a very specific subject. And you and I really, really need to take an account of that. Now what is the subject? The government of the promised son. All right. Now, what does it mean is Colossians 3, 2. I would like to go to the New Testament. We always try to connect dots between the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. Only then you will have a specific understanding that uh, you do not have to separate. Old Covenant is different for old people. New Covenant for all new people. What is this? Some people have, you know, even defi you know, uh, I defined their own definitions of this Old Covenant and New Covenant. That is like born again believers, brother, only New Covenant. Uh, all the Catholic Christians and uh, CSIs, Orthodox, traditional, Old Covenant. Who are you? Who, 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 uh, on whose definitions you are talking all of this is what we don't understand. Uh, not, there is nothing like that. All 66 books are needed for us to always think through on every single word of God. It's very important. Okay. Now, Colossians 3.2 says like this, Set your mind on things above not on things on the earth, right? We all know this verse, it's quite famous. Um, what it recommends is nothing but, do not be carried away with the materialistic matters, such as, uh, will I get a good bride for my uh, daughter? Will I get a, sorry, uh, uh, for my son? And will I get a groom, good groom for my daughter? And what will I do for my daughter's education? And uh, what if my job? Fear and worry mingled with all sorts of, the worldly matters, right? Of course, it's quite natural whenever we go through certain circumstances in life, we always tend to get into some sort of pressure, which is quite common. It's okay. If you are going through such a situation, you do not know there is a crisis, money crisis, and uh, you do not know how to pay your uh, bills or pay your school uh, daughter's school fees or something like that, then yes, I can understand. All of us go through that kind of problems in life some or other point of time. I'm not denying that. 
but that's not about it right that's not always about it that you will keep on thinking through what am i going to do for the future from the materialistic standpoint of course you got to plan for it you got to work hard you need to put in efforts to overcome clear the bills you need not be a debtor always and uh, you definitely trust in the word of god second corinthians 9 8 and 8 9 for jesus had gone through this form of poverty that you and i could be rich and at the same time there is abundance in every good work that you do and the grace of god or our lord jesus there is no concept of poverty so now let let's come to the original point what is this set your mind on the things that are above there is a life after death many of the christians don't get to remind on this they stop where the bible stops in revelation 20 but they don't go beyond it Revelation 21 and Revelation 22 are the most exciting chapters for me why because these are the chapters which provides me or you or all of us the sneak peek as what is going to happen after the white throne judgment white throne judgment talks about two things people thrown into the lake of fire those that have uh, fallen into deception those that have rebelled against god and stuff like that but peep it also talks about the second half those are the bunch of sheep right goats versus sheep you can i I've, i've done a series it's in the playlist matthew 25 i've spoken the sheep will enter the chosen servants of god the chosen ministers of god the chosen children of god and how you and i could be the chosen children of god is very simple just abide in the laws and commandments of god simple and be grounded and rooted in the word of god day and night those who shall meditate in the word of god i'm pleased as god says this so the point i'm trying to make here is children of god who enter into the kingdom of heaven there is a simple sneak peek given right you read 20, revelation 21 it really excites me a new city designs uh, you know new heaven and earth is created and you will see that you know lions playing with sheep and a little boy you know leading the wild animals this and that there is no bloodshed there is no murder there is no gossiping there is no murmur all the sins that are being explained in second corinthians sorry second timothy 3 1 to 9 colossians 3 5 to 9 and 1 Corinthians 6 9 and 10 Romans 1 29 to 32 Mark 7 21 to 23 1 Timothy chapter 1 verses 9 and 10 and uh, Romans 6 uh, 13 to 20 and Ephesians 4 31 all these verses if you read you will see Galatians 5 17 to 21 there are bunch of sins passive sins being packaged very well by the holy spirit you all remember these verses don't remember fine you rewind the tape write it down and go through it you will understand there are 50 to 60 different types of sins that are being explained none of this will exist and there will be no tears in the people in, in 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 your eyes there will be no sorrow there will be no grief right there will be no anguish there will be nothing that is called as negativity in this world if you switch on the news newspaper if you you know flip the pages it's all about negativity it's all about bad news especially in this pandemic situation 3 years i've been hearing about death and death and death poverty people losing job pay cuts and not knowing what to do many people kill themselves because they don't know how to survive they lost the job and children are starving there wife is homemaker what to do it's all about it but all of this is going to go i've gone to colossians 3 2 and i'm still stuck there i'm going to come here right now where are we isaiah chapter 9 verse 2 um, or isaiah chapter 9 i'm talking about the title the government of the promised son and uh, many people don't talk about revelation 21 they talk about revelation 20 what is this revelation 20 1000 years reign brother this is what is being discussed i agree no problem with that right there are two halves to this government of the promised son number one is this 1000 years reign i agree 1000 years reign is like one day for christ or one day for god the father which means that's going to come to a conclusion very soon after 1000 years the devil will be released and there will be one more battles uh, happening and then forever he is going to be sealed in the bottom sorry thrown into the lake of fire revelation 20 10 says along with them false prophets and other people who were rebelling against god will be thrown right is that is the, is it the end no then comes the exciting news about revelation 21 now why am i saying all of this in this world our mind is full of pressure mind is full of worries when the government passes a new law immediately we all get shaken right where i am impacted or not what happens to my property what happens to my savings this and that and all that and we get into all sorts of worries and all that do not be worried because our god says that do not worry because enough is the trouble for today tomorrow let it have its own trouble matthew 6 right when our god the father is taking care of the birds of the air 
and all the animals and all the creations you and i are created in the image of god this inner fellow right inner man his name is called a soul and he's immortal and there is no end for that soul and that's what i told you either he goes to the lake of fire and burns there eternally or lives with god in heaven forever and ever rejoicing in his presence this is what is revelation 21 revelation 21 doesn't belong to people who have been thrown into the lake of fire that's why i'm telling you those that shall love to read revelation 21 they are the ones who are focused on this government of the promised son now on the, at the same time i want you to read romans 13 later and i want you to read uh, second peter uh, one of the chapters i think second peter 2 or 3 he has written about this government while you are living here on earth you need to learn to be submissive to your government authorities you have to pay the tax paid you have to do, do not crib now what am i why am i paying this tax i don't even have a good road to walk that's not your problem you think god has closed your eyes uh, closed his eyes and he's blind about it no he also knows the roads are bad but those guys who are looting the money will have to give an account they are going to be thrown into the lake of fire you want to be a gossiper and want to join that company no you don't want to that's why bible says focus on the things that are above focus on the life that is after your life on earth right there is a life waiting exciting life waiting for you and me on earth that's why keep yourself away from deception bible says because the deceiver is at work because the devil is at work because he knew that the number of days on earth for him is very very limited and he would not spare anyone why because he wants a big company with him burning in the lake of fire and i'm not ready for it I don't want to join that company. I want to join the company of the angels. I want to join the company of the saints of God. And I want you also to be with me. We all should be with Jesus. And we should rejoice there. Yeah. That's why Bible says, shift your focus from point A to point B. And point A are the worries of the world, the pressures of the world, the, 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 the politics, right? And so many other corrupt things, lusts of the world, right? And stay away from it. Now, by saying this, some people, especially some of the spirit-filled churches, no, they go to the extremity. That's the big problem in Christendom today. The government of the promised land means, uh, they, they also talk about Colossians 3 too. That's why we should not have properties, brother. That's why we should drive bicycles and we should not buy cars. We should not waste money, this and that. But people who are saying this, no, they are buying big, big properties. They are building big, big uh, you know, buildings and all that. And I've seen enough of this in my journey in this Christendom. So forget it. I'm not even getting in there because they are also part of the looters, the political looters. They are no different from politicians, right? They are, you know, they are looting money in a different way. They are, they are, he, these guys are looting money in the middle of the church. Who is going to go through a bigger judgment? Tell me. Those politicians or these guys? These guys, you know the truth, right? So I'm not getting in there. But, but the point here is your focus must always be on God the Father and living eternally with him and nothing else now let us talk about from the scriptures right i've already given you a lot of references you set a good contest we will read four or five um, verses and we will close another two three minutes we will close the people i'm reading from isaiah 9 2 the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light those who dwell in the land of the shadow of death upon them a light has shined right I am the light to the world. This light means immediately you need to go to the New Testament scriptures. Jesus said, I am the light to the world. Those who shall follow me, they will never see darkness. And they also shall be transformed in such a way. And they also will be light in the, to, the, in the, to the world. Ephesians chapter 5 verses 1 to 10 if you read, it's, it's, uh, you get necessary instructions of what it is to walk in light. And I preached about that in another sermon. It is in the, in the playlist. Right? It's very detailed. If some of you need, need instruction and guidance about this light, how light means nothing but you will be a blessing to others. You will be such a role model in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity and uh, in speech. Right? That's what Bible says in 1 Timothy 4.12. As good as like people who see you will see Jesus. Christ-like mindset, Philippians 2.5. This is nothing but the definition of light. Uh, I'm just telling in simple terms. If I were to talk about this one word light, I may need 100 hours. It's so detailed. Because why? Jesus told this. I am the light to the world. And everything is encompassed in that one big circle, one big word. That's why it's very important. And uh, those who walked in darkness, when they see this new era, golden era coming, 
you will never live in darkness darkness again constitutes to every sort of sin i given you all the references you go through it uh, just before the just at the beginning of the session i gave you go through it darkness means any form of sin it may be lust in your eyes anger in your head and the words of your mouth are so corrupt filthy language whatever it may be it is definitely something con you know uh, uh, trans it, it's a, it's all about you know uh, defining the uh, sinful state that we are divine uh, living in darkness when we are see already i'm go, and i have a point to make let me go there right <clears throat> verse number 5 for every warrior sandal from the noisy battle and garments rolled in the blood will be used for burning and fuel of fire what does it mean is there is kingdom fighting against king, kingdom nation fighting against nation politician fighting against politician any uh, ch child of god fighting against another child of god there are gang wars in the churches also right there are bloodshed happening murders happening there are people who always want to keep this nation in unrest there are people who always want to keep the world in unrest yeah there are some evidences which are released that uh, it was not a natural virus it was released from a lab somewhere in china and uh, there is no evidence china is denying it that's a different thing but then somebody did it because why they don't want world to remain calm they don't want to see that this, this world in a peaceful state there who are these people bloodshedders right and this is the current situation this is the current situation of this world correct or not always there will be some nation india china fighting against uh, us us fighting against russia and india uh, india is not a fighting country india is a peace loving country we all know that but there are many people who fight with us pakistan is bangladesh and all there will be always some sort of commotion happening in this world you will not see this in this new era that's the whole point i will i will just read 6 7 and 8 for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government will be upon his shoulder it's talking about 1000 years jerusalem reign also and also about the other new heaven and earth which will descend the city of god revelation 21 2 and 3 city of god will descend it's talking about that and his name will be called wonderful counselor and uh, mighty god everlasting father prince of peace right uh, or the of the increase of the government and peace there will be no end upon the throne and david and over his kingdom in order and it established with judgment and justice from that time forward even forevermore the zeal of the lord of hosts will perform this why i am reading this verse fully is does it mean that the justice of god is missing today you think jesus lost control and we have to wait for the 1000 years reign and we have to wait for this new heaven and earth only there is always a deception uh, going across the christendom this are I mean, a deceptive teaching right never ever think god is not having control why because 1 corinthians 10 13 if you take and read he allows everything in a threshold what you and i can bear he makes a way for us to escape and he will not allow any temptations beyond our strength or capability or ability or your caliber or your skills or whatever it may be which means what simple i i can show multiple references but one thing i'll tell you without god's permission the devil cannot touch even the tip of your hair which means the devil cannot the devil has the rights to you know control the nature he can bring fire and burn uh, jobs uh, living stock and all that in job chapter 1 you know right and he has the power to touch Uh, job's body and bring inflict him with sickness he has power to touch his family and kill all his sons he spared his wife because he is a very she was very useful because she asked him to curse and all that so let me otherwise wives will get offended so forget it i'm not getting in there right job 1 and 2 you take and read you will understand but never forget there were three hedges around job one around his uh, household uh, that means all his belongings around his life and around his um uh, soul right and 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 his properties and possessions three hedges were there and god controls these hedges without god's permission and without god opening up that hedge mr devil cannot enter into anyone's life not into this world he is the ruler of the earth moving around across to and fro what can i do whom i can devour and all that he is a mad fellow but without god's permission he can't do anything which means what god is righteous god is full of justice he is upright and he is powerful and he is controlling the earth even today all the governments that are ruling and reigning they think or oh, because of their talent because of their campaigning skills they came to power and this and that no god allows god decides no man can decide no man can 
overpower god or you know overrule god's decision sorry that's not the truth god is in control even until the 1000 years jerusalem reign is going to happen god is in control even during the 1000 years jerusalem reign god is in control again even after the 1000 years jerusalem reign and that's why bible ends um, i will read this for his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward even for evermore jesus is the same unchanging god yesterday today and forever more bible says in hebrews 13:8 and that applies to every situation that you and i may go through in this world therefore my beloved brothers and sisters do not be dismayed bible says do not be discouraged joshua 1:8 says that that we have every reason to celebrate the birth of christ every single day in the midst of all these calamities in the midst of all these natural disasters pestilences all uncertainties you and i have one thing that we cannot lose that is the joy of the lord which will always remain as our strength because of this verse which i have read that he is in control and his judgment and his justice will reign forever and forever more god bless you hope this session was useful uh, please subscribe to our channel get access to all our playlist the reason is you will get automatic notification and you i don't want you to miss on any videos because every single word of god is a, is a weapon is a tool spiritual weapon you should use it to fight against the wiles of the devil do not miss on any weapon do not miss on any session you are not hearing the voice of a man it's the voice of the holy spirit that's why we speak from scriptures it's not my own fairy tales i don't cook my stories and come and uh, waste everybody's time not even my time not even my holy spirit's time we speak from the word of god and it's the holy spirit's voice that you are hearing and i am hearing do not miss share it with your friends share it with your relatives and uh, continue to pray for me and for our ministries once again wishing all you a very happy new year and may god bless you and prosper you and keep you peaceful and healthy and grant you long life all through this year god bless you vanakkam namaskaram